The year was 1957, and in a cramped schoolhouse, many children were learning their first basic English words, not realizing how their participation would enhance future Mexican-American education in this country. Education was very limited for the Mexican-American community during that time. We had an 80% dropout rate or more, so that means that one out of, uh, out of four persons uh, were the ones that were going through the school system. I mean, uh, the, the state of Texas did an additional job in educating our population. Basically, there was no bilingual education program for anybody unless you lived in the border areas where they uh, right away uh, were utilizing Spanish to get to the English in a transition mode. But we had no curriculum. We had no state law. We did not have Lao versus Nichols to force school districts to accommodate limited English proficiency students. And consequently, we did not have a high uh, graduation rate at the time and people would work in agricultural jobs so it was a very dismal picture for our community at that time. And so with much need an educational program was developed and aimed at fulfilling the educational needs of Spanish dominant children in Texas. The little school of the 400 as it was called was founded by Mr. Felix Tijerina, LULAC's national president at the time. He began the program as a pioneer effort in the advancement of Mexican-American education. Mr. Felix Tijerina is one of my heroes. I've read a lot about him and uh, I am really impressed with the fact that he keyed in on education. He came here working as a migrant coming from Mexico and worked in the valley and eventually worked his way up to uh, Houston, Texas where he became a restaurateur. He uh, incorporated himself to LULAC, became the president and went on, went on to become the national president. He was, in fact, the confidant to elected officials and to presidents, but he always wanted to give back to his community. So he went out and investigated to see how he could help uh, people learn English so they could compete in an English-dominant world. It was a program which would leave a positive impact on the public school system in Texas. The purpose of the program was to teach 400 basic English words to Spanish-speaking children and help them cope effectively with instruction given in English throughout regular public schools. This little school of the 400 was organized back in uh, around 1957 because uh, many of the ch children, uh, the Mexican-American children uh, who uh, didn't speak English uh, were having a hard time making it. Uh, the, about 25% of them would, uh, would fail the first grade and sometimes they would fail the second grade and the third grade. By the time they got to the fourth grade, uh, it's estimated that about 45% of the children would drop out of school because they felt embarrassed going with those who did pass, who were a lot younger. So uh, that's the reason why LULAC back there in 1957 uh, organized the Little School of the 400 to teach uh, preschool children the 400 basic words so that they could succeed and go on through school. It also focused on recognizing and reinforcing the child's cultural heritage, developing his self-confidence, and encouraging parental participation. The classes initiated with one school at Ganado, Texas. At age 14, Miss Isabel Verver was hired by Mr. Tijerina to recruit and teach the class of Ganado preschoolers. They often met in the summer and eventually held class throughout the year. Miss, Miss Isabel, I remember Miss uh, Isabel is a very young girl uh, and she was hired to teach the first class in Ganado, Texas. Uh, I understand that Mr. Felix Tejerina paid her out of her own pocket uh, uh, 75 cents an hour to teach about 30 uh, preschool children uh, who didn't speak English to teach them the English uh, 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 basic words which are about 400 and that's the reason they call it the uh, Little School of the 400. And I understand that um, all the children did quite well uh, when they started first grade. I understand that only one of them failed the first grade. Through Mr. Tijerina's efforts, this pilot project soon spread throughout Texas and under President Lyndon B. Johnson's administration became a model for many future programs, helping thousands of children deal adequately with their primary school year and successfully lowering the dropout rate significantly. 
we had a lot of the elected officials come to all the state conventions, and at one of the conventions, LB, uh, LBJ, who was then a senator, heard about this report about the little school of 400. So when LBJ becomes the president, when JFK was assassinated in Dallas, one of the first things he told Sergeant Shriver, who became the head of the war on poverty, and Sergeant Shriver said, yes, Mr. President, he said, I want all the children of America to be able to have a head start, just like all my Mexican-American friends in Texas have done for their children, where they learned the first basic 400 words, and thus was born the Head Start program in this country. The little school of the 400 aimed at fitting Mexican-Americans into mainstream American society, reflected LULAC's long-lasting commitment to fostering education as a key to Mexican-American advancement and was counted by LULAC as one of its most important projects. I cannot begin to tell you the importance of education. Like I said before, education is a liberating force. Education no one can take away from us. And as we become the number one minority in this nation and also the fastest and, and uh, the fastest growing and the largest, we need to have an educated population and that's why education is so important to us. Today, we can certainly see in the countless success stories of our children that the efforts and struggles of LULAC and many others have not been in vain, but instead continue to move us forward to a better tomorrow.